So today, I thought I'd talk about a distribution of particles, um, whether it be microscopic or macroscopic. Um, the process is pretty much the same, and uh, identifying those objects against the background, and then using one of our classification tools to um, to look at a distribution. So the um, the two examples that I have, one is wood chips, um, but like I mentioned, it, these these objects can be various um, objects. Um, and uh, and these two samples, um, I believe, were both taken by either DSL SLR cameras or an iPhone. Um, I believe the wood chips image was taken from an iPhone. So you know, we get various images from all kinds of different sources. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether it's microscopic or something sent on a microscope, or somebody with an iPhone uh, taking images. We can we can do the analysis um, just fine. Um, so as, as usual, the measurement is to uh, quantify the distribution of the particles and get some kind of an output, data table, histograms, um, maybe percent class images, and we'll take a look at that inside of Image Pro and review again um, kind of how to do that. But keep in mind, in the back of your mind, um, that you know even the sample images that are shown, they're just an example. Um, I'm sure that you can find examples of other samples that you may be working with. Um, so this, I think, was a sample that was taken from the iPhone. Um, customer had supplied a few images, and I think these are wood chips from some kind of a process that they do, and they want to look at what the pieces are that are the result of this process. Um, but again, the, this could be various types of imaging, uh, various types of samples. So what you, one thing that you notice um, is that there is a hot spot in the center, and a lot of times that happens just uh, from the iPhone or the various cameras. Maybe have a flash, and, and you'll get a hot center area. Um, remember, inside of Image Pro, under the Process tab, um, we have this 2D filter called Flatten, and you just specify whether the background is light or dark, and it does a very nice job of flattening the image, and then that makes the segmentation step um, a lot more straightforward. Um, in this case, um, when we get into Image Pro, I'll show you how we get to this step, but um, this would be the result where we've identified the different objects against the background. And, um, and then applied one of the classification tools uh, that we offer here. That we have a single variable classification, the learning um, classification, which is our machine learning algorithm, and, um, and the auto classification. So we'll take a look at this in a few minutes inside of Image Pro. Um, and uh, <clears throat> this one here shows um, the result. Um, um, from the first type of uh, single variable classification. And you'll notice in the data table, we've chosen the group output, uh, the grouping output here to show that the, um, the classes are co um, collapsed here. And um, we're showing a summary from each of the different various classifications. Okay. And you'll notice over here we have the histogram. And um, on the right side, we also have the new uh, pie chart um, that can show um, the various percentages of the classes um, that have been defined. Um, so the second one here is um, related to um, asphalt rock, and um, the particular customer uses um, Image Pro to quantify the various percentages. Um, these would be the asphalt rock that's used um, for the roofing um, product. And so in order to get the color just right, and they want to be consistent, they use Image Pro to quantify the color and the, and the various composition of the roofing material. Um, but again, there could be various types of samples that would kind of do the same thing. <clears throat> so this sample here um, starts with, um, I guess they just throw some of the sample out on a white piece of paper, and, um, and then they want to look at the various distribution. Um, the first thing that you'll see is that the color balance on the first image here um, seems to be off, and so in order to be consistent, um, they actually use a white balance um, first. And we have an app um, that's been produced um, by our engineers or app team, and um, does a very nice job of doing the white balance. And I'll show that to you. Um, and again, in that way, the um, the process and the analysis can be very consistent and re reproducible um, from batch to batch. 
Um, this is the result here after of the complete product or process um, where each of the different colors uh, in the rock were identified and then Image Pro shows the uh, distribution um, of the percentages of the various um, rock com compositions that make up the, uh, the final product. Okay. Um, maybe we'll step out and go over to Image Pro and um, take a look at these. So here's that first image um, that we talked about, which was the wood chips and, again, various types of samples um, may use this kind of a analysis. Um, but what we want to do is identify these objects against the background. And again, um, count size is um, uh, the place where we would do this. You can use either the bright or dark histograms um, for segmentation or um, the smart segmentation. Um, I tend to like to use smart segmentation. It just um, is it's easy to use and very powerful. And again, you can train the smart segmentation algorithm across, you know, more than one image. So the algorithm gets smarter and smarter as you um, apply more images to the, uh, to the algorithm here. So remember, the, to get this thing started, we hit reset and um, apply all for the um, um, recipe categories here. And then we just choose um, our objects. Um, and remember, we can use various tools here. Um, if I'm going to use a circle here, I can come in here and encircle some of these objects here and choose them against the background. Um, we'll choose various ones here. And then as soon as we choose them, um, and we can use various tools here, like for instance, um, this will help to identify objects which may be more linear um, in morphology rather than, you know, circular, things like that. So um, be sure to change the tool if it's appropriate for your particular sample, okay? And then just choose your background and uh, zoom into here. And we can change the size of the particles here that we're looking at here too. So if I reduce this, um, the size filter here, it'll help to become a little bit more accurate. And also I can go in if the particular segmentation is going overboard and, and selecting some of the background, I could go back into background and choose some of the background and, and remove that also, okay? But that looks pretty good. It looks like it did a pretty good job. Um, now this large object over here, that was the scale or the ruler um, that was placed in the field of view. Um, of course, we could do a calibration off of that. And, um, and now when we go to count this, obviously we, we, we'll be able to exclude this large object because it's so much um, greater in size than the, uh, the rest of the particles. So if we go in here now after doing our segmentation, um, if I do my count, Actually, what I can do is set my ranges first, actually. So I can go into ranges here and just get rid of that large, um, um, one large object here, okay? And, uh, and then be able to um, find only our small uh, objects here when we do our count, okay? So <clears throat> what we have now is each of the objects has been identified. It found some 400 objects in here, which is probably appropriate, I suppose. There may be some small single pixel sized objects, right? And we could go into edit range and just get rid of some of those single pixels if we wanted to and, um, um, and help to see them go away. And you can kind of see them down here too um, as I raise this minimum threshold value, okay? <clears throat> and again, once we come up with this setting here, remember we can go up to save and we're going to save this as this IQO file. I can just save this right over the top of wood chips if I'd like to. Okay. And again, remember under options, this is where there's a lot of preferences that can be set. Um, it looks like I'm doing a little bit of smoothing here, so I probably don't necessarily need that for this particular sample. So I'm going to take that smoothing off, and then you'll see these outlines would probably be a little bit more accurately um, reflecting the samples, okay? And they can be filled or not. Uh, remember, this option is for filled. And then remember, we have labels over here if you wanted to show measurements or any kind of values that might um, be appropriate to show over the top of the objects. And if you do have measurements on, you can choose the actual measurement that you want to use also. 
So we can use area or you might use length or diameter um, as the actual value for the measurement that gets displayed over the top of the object. Okay. For right now, I'm just going to leave it on none. And since I have made a couple of little changes here, I'm just going to go back up and save right over the top of my IQO file. Okay, so we've got our objects that are included. And secondarily, we might want to um, classify these now, right? And so we can use either a single variable classification where we could choose and pick any one of our parameters that we might want to classify these based upon, whether it's, you know, area or diameter or length. Um, any of those parameters. Um, I'll just do it based on area here. And then you can decide um, how many bins you would like to have your objects um, distributed into. Um, and you could actually specify the bin sizes also. Um, if we just say okay here, it'll give us a distribution and we can visualize a table. Okay, so we have our table down in the bottom. We can bring up a histogram. And uh, if we want, we can bring up our object window. There's all kinds of ways of viewing the data here, right? So, um, so now we get a lot of information here. We got our objects, the way they're distributed. Um, we got a data table that can be exported out to Excel. Um, we can visualize our histogram. We can interact with any of the objects, and uh, the information is updated um, in the table. If I were to expand the green table here, we would actually see, um, we should be able to see inside that area where that particular object resides. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. should go both ways. You can either touch the objects here or touch them in the table also. Okay. Okay, so that's um, that's how we did this particular analysis, and um, and I think that was it for here. Um, yeah, that's pretty good for that one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this one now. Um, the next one that we were going to look at here is this asphalt distribution, and I could have done a color correction on the previous one. Color wasn't as important. Um, in fact, I could have even extracted out a monochrome channel from that other image, right, and done the analysis as a monochrome image. Um, with this particular image, um, color is important, and um, we do have um, the white balancing app so if we were to go, you could go up to the App Center and download it. Um, if you've already got it loaded onto your system, you could just go to your scripts folder, go down to white balance, and then, um, and then choose the project, and it will load into Image Pro. <clears throat> and it shows up here, and remember, like any of the apps, if you hover over them, there's a help file that pops up, and that can give you help on that particular help to the app and show you how to go about doing the, uh, the process correctly. So if I clicked on white balance here, um, it prompts me, and it says that I should draw a region which uh, reflects the white area. So I'll just go ahead and use a square area, and I can take it from a few different areas here, and I think it will average those. And when I say OK, if I say correct the image, we get a nice white balance. Okay, And you could save these if you wanted to apply this, if you had some constant condition, some um, lighting area that you used, and you knew that it was going to be consistent, you could save and load those. And then um, you could just apply that to every image. Okay. Um, so here is an example of just a small area that was extracted and zoomed up here. And this is what I would use probably then to do the, um, the classification or identification of these objects here against the background. And again, I'll go ahead and flush this out here. And, um, and I'll go ahead and use the classification tools inside of Image Pro here. Okay, we can do it either by identifying all objects ahead of time and then use a secondary classification, maybe learning uh, classification to identify these, but I'll just go ahead and identify them here. And the first class, you know, it's just going to be something like dark, let's say, and um, the second class would be, I think it's kind of a greenish color. And then um, the other one would be kind of a reddish color. Okay. So if we wanted to start to identify our, our different um, classes, you could say those are dark, these are dark, okay. Um, 
um, we can go ahead and do our other ones and you can say, okay, these guys are going to be kind of the green colors, green colored kind of. And the last one here is going to be kind of a reddish color. Now the other thing is a lot of times we will go ahead and do a, um, a low pass filter first. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like right now and then we'll see why we might use that um, low pass filter. So if I turn um, and now I select my background, <clears throat> so I was selecting my foregrounds there, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and do my background and you'll see it kind of get started here. And it does a pretty good job, and there's a mix here now of these different um, colors, okay? Now, we might want to, rather than having these individual stones show up with slightly variations, um, if we did run a, um, a select, sorry, if we run a process 2D filter first, um, you'll find an enhancement filter here called low pass, um, or there's also a Gaussian filter. And both of these are softening filters, and um, what they do is kind of blend the pixels together so that the larger objects themselves are, are kind of identified as one object as opposed to um, more discrete um, spatial information here. So, so I'm going to go ahead and use like a Gaussian filter, um, maybe a 3x3 three three here. It looks pretty good, and I think you'll get the idea. So we'll go ahead and apply that. Okay. So now if I go back into my count size and smart segmentation um, and I turn my overlay back on, um, you'll see these kind of fill in and they're a little bit more solid objects, okay? And, um, and again, we could work with the foreground and the background and be very, just, you know, uh, specific about um, the identification of the, the stones themselves. But if I went ahead right now and did a count, I can take my ranges off here if I want. Uh, let me take ranges off, and I'll go ahead and do a split here, too, okay? And we'll do our count. We'll give it a second to work on that. Okay. And if we wanted to, we could change under our options. Remember, um, I can go back in here under count size options and come down in here and filled, and we can kind of see the different distribution here too. Let me take fill holes off, and then we'll take a look, see what we have here. <clears throat> okay. So once we've identified this, um, we can go in, look at our histogram, look at our distribution um, based on color information. Um, we could use, I think, one of these. I think this, the Y, where is it? the Y component here. Anyway, there's various color information that can be used to, um, to differentiate and look at different color models here. Um, we can go back into types here, of course, and look at region and um, go down here. There's various color models here that we can look at, like the red, green, and blue, and just any one of these colors that we might want to use as the, um, as the uh, differentiation, um, we just add those into our selected measurements or any of the other color models and tools that we've brought in here, okay? Um, the data table itself um, will show, let's bring it up here. The data table will show the distribution of the objects, okay? And the classification based on our segmentation and um, it'll give the percentages of the different classifications. Uh, you can measure if you wanted, if we were more critical here in our segmentation um, in choosing the objects themselves and did separations and splitting, we could even look at size. But it was more just colorometric information for this application that was really important, okay? And then knowing what these percentages are, um, they could kind of Quantify, they could um, qualify this particular batch or if it needed to add a little bit more of some color, then they would be able to add that too. So 